Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 14 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. I'm going to need you to pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. I'm going to need you to get out your Jetson Nano gear and I'm going to need you to get ready to learn some cool stuff. Hey, want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over on Patreon. It's a huge encouragement to me when you decide to actively become a part of this channel. Motivates me to continue to want to strive to put out quality educational resources. Those of you who have not checked it out yet, you can look down in the description. There's a link to my Patreon account. Think about hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's learn something good. What we're going to learn today is we're going to learn how to use OpenCV to write video to a file and to read video from a file. What we've done so far in these lessons, we've gone out and we've grabbed a frame from the camera and then we've shown the frame on the screen. Well, sometimes you might not want to be grabbing a frame from the camera. You want, might want to grab a grab a frame from a file. So let's say that you're training an artificial intelligence system to do lane detection. Well, you don't want to be driving down the highway with a camera as you're trying to program. Important safety tip there, not a good idea. It would be better to drive down the highway, record a video, then come back to the lab and start doing your coding based on the video, not based on live feed from a camera. Does that make sense? Similarly, sometimes you're doing some training and generating some things and you want to kind of capture that video and you want to be able to dump those video frames to a file. So that's what we're going to learn today. Going to be a pretty quick and simple lesson today, but nonetheless, it is going to be a pretty important lesson. So let me get out of your way. And so I will move out of the way here and then we will come over to the Jetson Nano and let's open up our code OSS, our Visual Code Studio, <coughs> and um, have that come open. And then let me get it here in a proper position for you to see. And then what I will want to do is I will want to create a new uh, a new file and I believe we are working in OpenCV and so I should have a folder here. Let me col close some of these other folders and I got a lot of things going on here. I'm sorry this came up kind of with everything open. So this is the folder that we're open in. You should already have this folder. It's called OpenCV. Okay and then what I need you to do is I need you to come up here with OpenCV selected come up here to the plus so you're going to add a new file and what you are going to call this uh, file let's call it uh, save read save read because you're going to save and you're going to read and it's going to be a python program so you're going to click dot pi okay <coughs> now you've got your uh, you've got your program open. I'm going to come up here and I don't like to have a lot of tabs so mine came open with that welcome tab open so I'm going to close that. And then what we want to do is we want to start with our core program that interacts with the camera. Uh, you probably already have it saved as OpenCV1. You can go there and you can copy and come over here and paste. Don't go over and edit this because we always want to start with this program. We always want to start with this program. So don't edit it. Copy it and bring it over to your new program. Also, if you don't have that yet, you can come over to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and you can search on something like uh, Jetson, uh, <coughs> Jetson Nano Camera. <coughs> And then, uh, well, let me try again. How about Jetson Nano? Maybe I called it. Let me just search on Jetson Nano. I know it's here. Oh, I misspell. Oh, I'm misspelling Jetson. Justin. Jetson Nano Camera. Okay. And then we will search on that. And I am not able to spell today. What is wrong with me? Jet Sun. Double check. This time it will work. 
Never have I struggled so hard. There it is. Starting the Raspberry Pi camera or web camera on the Jetson Nano. We'll click on that. And then you can come down here. You see I've got all the code. You can come. You can click on the two little pages. Right mouse click copy. And then you can come over to your Visual Code Studio and you can paste it in. And let's just make sure all that nonsense worked. I am using the Raspberry Pi camera, so I will want to uncomment out the cam set here. You guys should already be familiar with this. We've done this for a while. The cam set string, and then I want to open the command where we capture or we create this camera objects. So you got those. If you are using a webcam, instead of uncommenting those two things out, you would uncomment out this uh, this one down here for video capture zero. That should work with most webcams. If it doesn't work, you might try changing the zero to a one, and then that will likely work. Okay, let's make sure that we have live video. So I'm going to right mouse click, and I'm going to say run Python file in terminal. Okay, boom, there it is. All right, now I'm going to quit. I'm going to add one command that we learned last week, and that was cv2 dot move window. Okay, move window, and then it wants the window name. Well, my window name is nano cam from the line above. And then it wants an X and Y position. I'm just going to put 0, 0. And this way I'll get the window always coming up to the upper left of the screen. And then I don't have to mess with it. So now let's see if that works. Come back, run Python file and terminal. Okay, there it is. Boom. We've got it right where we want it. Okay, things are looking good. Looks like a good aspect ratio. Things look pretty natural. So I will cue to quit that. Okay, so now <clears throat> let's start talking about what we really want to do in today's lesson. <clears throat> and that is to be able to, let's start by creating a video. Okay, so I'm going to be grabbing video frames from the camera. And then I want to save a video to, uh, to the uh, memory card. So... What I suggest would be the best thing would be to come up here to Pi Pro. And so click on Pi Pro and then click on this second icon, <coughs> which says new folder. And we're going to click on that to create a new folder. And unfortunately, it looks like it tried to create it in OpenCV, which I don't want. I want it in Pi Pro. And then I'm going to come and click plus. And then let's see, I hope that's not putting it in OpenCV, but videos. And then let's see what happens. Darn it, it did put it inside of OpenCV. So let me delete that. Okay, move to trash. This is a little bit awkward. I'm going to click all the way off of OpenCV, and then I'm going to come up here. Ah, okay, now it's going to put it in, uh, in Pi Pro. Guys, it is kind of important. You've got to make sure you know where it is. So I'm going to call it videos, okay? And that's just a folder now. And so I have a folder inside of Pi Pro called videos. And you see if I close OpenCV, videos is in there in the main directory. Now you could put it inside of OpenCV if you want, but then if you do that, your path to the file is going to be a little bit different. Does that make sense? We're trying to set up a convenient place to put our videos, a, con a convenient place to put our videos. Okay, so now let's get in and see how we could capture a frame and write it to a file. What I want you to see is you're already capturing the frame with this program, right? You're already capturing frames with the program. You are capturing the frame and you're showing the frame. But what we want to do is we want to write it to a file. And so you got to do some bookkeeping up here at the top. And so let me come right here. And after I've created the camera object, I want to create a new object. And that new object that I want to create, let me, uh, let me make sure that you're going to be able to see this. Okay, that should be good right about there. Okay, so I want to create a file object that I can write to. 
So how would I do that? Well, I'm going to call this out, this object out vid. You could call it whatever you want, but this is something where the uh, video is going to output to. And then what am I going to say? I'm going to say out vid is equal to CV2. That is our library, CV2, our OpenCV library. And then what I want to do is video vid I'm spelling very poorly today. Video writer. Okay. Video writer. And now what I have to do is I've got to give it parameters. The first parameter is the file name. Okay. And the file name is referenced from your main working directory. What is my main working directory? My main working directory is PyPro. So everything should be referenced from the current working directory, which is PyPro. So then how would I get down to the video? Well, what I would say is I would open a single quote, and then I would say videos, because that's the folder inside of PyPro. Don't start with a slash. That would take you back to root. If you started with a slash and it took you to root, you would have to navigate all the way back down to your desktop and then to PyPro. Okay? And uh, now what we are going to do is slash mycam.avi. All right, so that is the file name itself, and I will close that quote. Okay, now what I need to do, I need to make this a little, let's see if I can resize this. Okay, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to turn off that, uh, that folder for right now so you got more, more room to see what's going on over here. And I think I can pull this over further. I'm just trying to really get it where you can see the whole thing of what I'm typing. Okay, so now we've got to kind of give it a format. And so we've got to go cv2.video writer and then underscore 4cc. Okay, so we're giving it the parameter cv2.video writer case sensitive uppercase v upper, uppercase w. 4cc and then we are going to open parenthesis and then an asterisk and then a open quote in uppercase xvid okay and so we've got cv2.videowriter underscore 4cc and then we have the asterisk and then we have the open quote xvid close quote Okay, now we got to go past the end of the quote and past the end of the parenthesis, and now we got to give it a frame rate. And that frame rate needs to be the frame rate that we set up here, which, if you are following along at home, our frame rate we set to somewhere in here. Our frame rate is 21. Okay. So we want to use that same number. If we're reading at 21, we want to make sure that we are writing it at 21. I hope that makes sense. And now what we have to do is we have to tell it the width and the height of the video. So it will be like W comma H. Now we got to make sure that we define what W comma H is. And we look up here and we see that I called it in this program display W and display height. So we actually need to use that. Okay, so we will say display width, and then we will say display uppercase H. All right, and so that in this program, we had set that up up here, and then we use that in cam set. And so then when we do the CV2.video capture, we are in fact at a display width of 640 and a display height of 480. So now we've created this out uh, this outvid object, and the outvid object knows where the file is. So we're not going to be interacting with that file. We're going to be interacting with outvid. It's like outvid sits between us and the file, if that makes sense. <coughs> so now what we need to do is we come down here. We have captured a frame with this command. We have shown the frame here. We understand that that moves the window. We're going to come down after the window move, and we're going to say out vid. That's that object that we're writing to, dot what, dot write. And then what do we want to write? We want to write uh, our frame, right? 
So it's like we grab a frame, we show a frame, and now we're going to write a frame. And so I hope that makes sense. Now there's one other bit of bookkeeping we've got to do that is pretty important. You know when we break here with the queue that we know that it's kind of important to, uh, uh, let me see, I think it's important to, I think, I don't think you can quite see this, so I need to pull this up a little bit. I want to make sure that you can see completely the window that I'm using. All right, so that looks good. So what we know is, is that when we quit the program with the Q, right, with the Q key, that we want to release the camera and we want to destroy all windows. Well, there's another thing now that we need to do, and that is outvid.release, and release, and then open close like that. Okay, so when we leave the program, we want to make sure that we clean up all this stuff. And those are the three things now that we need to do. Now, I'm going to come back and open up my browser, my file browser, because I'm going to run this thing. Man, this is very, very hard to figure out exactly where to grab it. There it is to resize. Okay. Now, where do we expect this to go? We expect this to go into video. So I'm going to open that window. And now I'm going to come over. I'm going to right, right mouse click. And then I'm going to say run Python file in terminal. Okay, boom. One thing that looks encouraging is I have a video. Okay, let's go one, two, three, four, five. So that's good. Okay, give it a second, and then I will come in here and I will quit out of the video. Ah, what do we have? We have inside of videos mycam.avi. <coughs> okay, now if you did not get a file show up, come down here and look and make sure that you don't have an error. And if you have an error, it is almost certainly either a silly mistake or you did not do your path right. You've got to make sure that you have the video inside of the main folder PyPro and then you navigate down into it. If that doesn't work and if you can't figure it out, if for some reason you're having strange problems, you can uh, oh, that was not good. Okay, you can come in and just save mycam.avi without a path, and then you'll just have to go find mycam.avi, and it should be on there somewhere. But if you're having errors, if you get rid of the path, you should see it. And then wherever it is, you know that that will be your current working directory that uh, that is being used by... Uh, uh, that is being used by our uh, Visual Code Studio. Okay, so that seems like it's pretty good. Hey, look, I have got right here this video. I don't think I can play it from here, but what I can do is I can close this and come to my Pi Pro, and then I can go to Videos, and then let's click on it. Boom! Look at that. And it looks like pretty much the right speed. Okay, it looks like pretty much the right speed. Okay, what I will tell you is it's pretty easy to kind of get the speed goofed up. Let's uh, let's see if we go smaller. If it works, let's change this the, to 320 by 240. Right mouse click, run Python file in terminal. Okay. There it is, small window like we would expect. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, five, zero, five, zero. Just trying to do something different to make sure that we can see that this is a new file. So we'll cue to quit. We'll get this out of the way. We will come back to the file and we will click on it. Okay. Now you see it's still displaying it big, so we really need to kind of make this smaller, but it does look good. Okay, so that's more like the size that we saved it. Try it again. I'm just checking on timing. Yeah, that looks like it's playing at the right speed. Now, what I have found is I found that if you try to make the video bigger, the timing kind of gets messed up. So if we want 640 to 1280, and then 240 is 480, 480 would go to 960. Let's try that. Right mouse click, run Python file in terminal, 
Okay, it does show up big. It does look pretty good. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that does look reasonable. I queued to quit. And now let's go back and let's look at the file. Okay. Okay, and what you can see is now the timing is all off. It's going fast. That's okay because if you're doing training or you're doing code development, the speed doesn't have to be right. You could still operate on this and it would be just fine. But just to understand for some crazy reason that uh, it's kind of hard to get this to work right. And what I've found is, is that if I use 640 and I use uh, 480, and then I use this command, this outvid command, to start it with uh, the uh, 4cc of xvid that it seems to work. And it works well enough to do the training. Okay, so that seems to work pretty well. All right, now I'm going to go ahead back to 640 by 480. That looks good. I'm going to run it, run Python file and terminal. And I'm going to make the video a little longer. So I'm going to go 1. Where am I? One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. So give it a little bit, give about 30 seconds of video because we will be working with this now. And so I'll click on it, quit. Okay, let's go back to our folder, make sure that we got a good video. I'll come here. Try clicking on it again. That looks good. Being very careful with the hand gestures there, yes. Okay, so that really, I think, looks about right. And so now that was 640 by 480, so we will come back to our Visual Code Studio. And let's see here. Uh, Okay, so what I'm going to do now is what we have done so far is we have gone out and we have written a file. We created a video file. What if you want to read from the file? Well, if you want to read from the file, what you want to do is let's take this cam command where we create our capture object and I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it and then I'm going to comment the first one out because I want to keep that original one where we capture from the camera. But now, instead of capturing from the camera, what I want to do is I want to do a cv2.video capture. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to capture from videos slash mycam.avi. Okay, so now instead of getting the video from the camera, I'm going to be getting the video from the file. And then down here, most of the other stuff is still the same. So I'm just going to still grab a frame. It's still cam read because now cam is going to the file instead of going to the camera. And then I don't want to be reading and writing the same thing. That would be kind of strange. So I'm going to comment out that. And then also, since I'm not actually writing anything, I might as well comment out that. Okay, so now let's see what happens. Right mouse click, run Python file and terminal. Okay, look at that. That is really good. Did you see that it went really fast? Why? Because I didn't put any timing in there. I'm just out there grabbing frames. I grab show, grab show, grab show. And it doesn't have any cognizance of frame rate or anything like that. But that's okay because if you're training it or you're just playing with it or you're trying to get some sort of face recognition or cat recognition or whatever recognition, it'll work with it going fast. But if that bothers you, you could put a delay in there. Or a little trick that I have found is down here where you say cv2.waitkey1, CV2 that's saying pause for one millisecond and see if a key is being hit. Well, instead of pausing for one millisecond, let's see, <clears throat> 21 frames per second, I think would be, if I can do math in my head, which is always dangerous, I think that would be about 50 milliseconds. So if I do the wait key of 50, that should slow this thing down. So let's do a right mouse click and let's say run Python file in terminal. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Boom. Okay. 
this has been a pretty quick and easy lesson, and I really think that's what you need to learn for today. Q button still works. I think that's what you need to learn for today. And so now as we're moving forward, if we have opportunity where we want to be doing training or we want to do, be doing visual manipulation or uh, visual processing, we don't have to be driving down the highway to do it, or we don't have to be in some strange location. We can take a video, and then we can train and learn and program from that video instead of from a live camera. Plus, you learned how to create the video. So that's a pretty good thing that we've learned today, and I think I'm going to leave it there. What we are going to do next week is we are, I'm going to check and make sure, we are going to learn how to draw things using OpenCV. So the way that would work is, is that you go out and you grab a frame, and then you draw something and then you show it. So you're sitting there between the grab the frame and the show. You're sitting there between the camera and the screen and you can start doing some manipulation. The manipulation we're going to be doing is showing how you can draw or put boxes or put text or put different things on the, you know, on the, the, the image. And so that'll be a pretty cool thing for us to do. And so that will be next week. Okay, guys, really appreciate you uh, sticking with the video. Hey, does anybody ever watch these videos to the end? Does anybody ever watch these videos to the end? Okay, leave me a comment and say that you made it all the way to the end. Think about giving me a thumbs up and I uh, would really appreciate if you guys would subscribe to the channel. Think about sharing this with other people. All right, this is Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.